Hey, what's up guys, Insanoflex here, and today I want to feature the Sleeping Tree Sanctuary, and I will be doing this review of this mod live, so I apologize if I make mistakes or draw stuff out, so I'm pretty new to the live stuff. Um, anyways, let's get started. So, to access this mod, there's two different versions. There's the quest version and the non-quest version. And um, I know most of you guys probably choose the non-quest version, so to get started, go to the Sleeping Tree camp, and uh, then you activate this this portal here, this Dias, and then that takes you up to the Sleeping Tree Sanctuary, and you get to play your home. Don't have to do any quests or anything. But I prefer to do the quest version, and I definitely recommend that. Is it? It's pretty fun to do. Um, and just as a quick note, if you're doing the quest version, if you get stuck on dialogue to this big guy over here called the Keeper, you need to go to a different cell. So I'd recommend going into the cave that's just behind that rock over there entering and exiting and that's all you have to do is just go to a different cell for a bit wait maybe an hour and the dialogue should work again but anyways I definitely recommend getting that uh, getting the quest version so let's go ahead and use the Dios here get this started so first thing you do is you float up in there which is pretty sweet because the sleeping tree sanctuary is a player home in the sky so it makes sense after kind of like hopping around for a bit there we are. Then after this really long loading screen because it loads so slow with fraps on. We'll get there though. We'll get there together. Don't you worry. You know, they could at least give me something to play with, like an item or something, you know. Just use my Xbox controller with. Oh way. Okay. There we go. So if you use the DOS come right here and you're greeted with a pretty sweet garden area that's well detailed and adds a lot of atmosphere and um, like I'll show there's this little garden over here with some bamboo there's some steps up here to the shrine which is pretty sweet and if you're doing the quest version you have to go up this ramp and enter that other hunk of rock right there and then kill um, a bunch of farmer, and then loot this courier's body, and then kill the boss that owns the place. So, but if you're not, you can just go ahead and activate this leather, or <laughs> leather, this lever to open the sanctuary, or you can walk down this ramp here that goes down to the dock. Where is the ramp? What the hell? It's right there, wasn't it? There it is. Try to hide from me. Okay, so you can go down this ramp, and it goes down to the airship that I briefly showed, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and open the Sanctuary. And if you have the non-quest mod, you can just do either one of those real quick. But if you have the quest version, you have to go up the path, and then go defeat the farmer inside the hunk of rock. That's a big mine area with lots of waterfalls, and those um, mushrooms that are blue from um, Blackreach? Or what's it called? That really, that really cool... Weimer place had the big mushrooms that were glowy. Alright, so we're inside. And so this first room is a crafting area. You got an anvil, auto storing, storage chests. Um, this goes to the mines. So, oh hell, I'll just go over that rule. I'll just go over that right now. That. I am disabled, or not disabled, I am challenged with the Xbox controller. It's very difficult. When I'm used to playing with mouse, but I I prefer to to do it when I'm doing stuff live. So, this long screen is forever. All right, so yeah, okay, those are those mushrooms I was talking about. All right, so if you get in here, this big cavern area, this is that big hunk of rock I was talking about. There's a bunch of farmer to kill down there. You kill them. No, excuse me. You kill them all, and then you go to this hut. Oh, I can't see it. There we go. Go to that hut in the center of the screen, and that's where you find the dead Curtis body. And then I'll proceed to the next next part of the quest. So. Yeah, anyways, this is just the mine part, so this is, um, got some crafting areas out here, smelter, grindstone, anvil, a uh, place where you can store ore, and some chest as well, to store crafting stuff in. Go back inside. Alright. And I didn't really go over this room in that much detail, so I'll do it over again. Got a workbench in this room, grindstone, tanning rack, and anvil. We'll go into this room. This is like the dining area. It's got a bunch of journals here. I'd recommend reading them. They provide a pretty good backstory and are pretty fun to read. And then you got this kitchen area. It's pretty sweet. Yep, kitchen area. 
All right. Oh, this goes down to the airship, where that ramp that goes down that I showed earlier. Um, and I'll go over that here last. So this next room is kind of like a display slash living slash entertaining room. So I guess I guess everybody gathers around this fire here, has a merry old time. Got a big old scary Saturnion to guard everyone. Some bookshelves on the side here, and into the master suite. So got some alchemy stuff up here. Chests, store stuff in. Got some cool decorations potion rack, ingredients, and you can store stuff here by activating this thing. And it's pretty sweet because you can store all of your ingredients, you can store half of them, you can keep one, or you can keep three ingredients, so it makes it nice for anyone that's herbalist out there. Then you got this alchemy lab, and you got some potion recipes that you can learn too. And then over here by this statue of this guy that looks like Buddha, I guess, I don't, I don't really know who he's supposed to be. Vivek, maybe? I don't know. Got enchanter and lots of chests. So these two right there. And then you got some mannequins. And sometimes they bug out and they stand up like that, so I would probably recommend not storing anything on top of these mannequins that go up and down, um, just for the meantime. And I'll mention this to the author of the mod so we can maybe fix that. Alright, so we got some beautiful decorations here, nice table. It's pretty sweet original design, kind of like a chandelier table. Pretty sweet. This next room is a armory store a bunch of stuff. We got some Dragon Priest storage, so you can store a mask right up on there. You can take it. That's I stored that mask there, so it doesn't come with that. Some more mannequins. I think these are safe because I have not seen these bugged out before. So I think they're good. You can store some stuff up there where I put some <laughs> iron maces and iron daggers and some of these weapon racks. Very tasteful. Alright. Got another mannequin. You could dress this guy up nice and pretty with all your clothes and armor stored right here. So these are all named and pretty well decorated so you can just look at a glance or where you put a chest or a helm. Pretty sweet. This bed area probably could be improved just a bit. I would like a better, more extravagant bed, but that's that's just my personal taste. And got, I don't know why I'm opening up a dresser. Got some dressers and cool scene right by the bed. So, And this scene is detailed in this book that you should read as well. So yeah, this mod adds a lot of pretty interesting books to the game that you should read. And um, I'm a big fan of the literature and all the Elder Scrolls games, so I like reading all the books that I pick up and look at. Except when I'm doing Let's Play, as I kind of just say, read the last word. So, And then this room I'm going into right now is like the spa room. you got a shower and a pool. And I really like the decorations and lighting in this room. It looks really um, comfortable and peaceful. You've got a pretty sweet pool they could dive right into. It has a cool cool design to it, lots of runes on the bottom from the Elder Scrolls, um, well, they were there just a second ago, oh, they did Pulse, oh, that's badass, that's cool, <laughs> go back outside, and that's it for the interior, because this goes right back into that um, entrance slash crafting room with the anvils and such, and I'll briefly go over these, um, where's the auto storage, there we go, these auto storage containers, so if you activate them, activate just like a regular one but if you crouch and activate it you could turn them on or off or have specific categories so and you could see what they are um, looking at based on the upper part of the screen can't really show because I don't have a mouse but it'll say ingredients one food one crafting one souls gems one etc zero means it's off and one means it's on so it say we don't want ingredients we don't want food in there we don't want crafting and we don't want books, because who reads books? All right. Except for me, I read books. I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> Whoops, keep, got to exit crash. There we go. And you activate that, see, you don't have any of that stuff. All right. And then, all menus. Oops, there we go. All right. So these are pretty sweet, because if you mess around with it some more, kind of went over this pretty sloppily, but anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory. One means on, zero means off. And they're pretty sweet for auto storaging stuff. Uh, let's head down this courier, courier, <laughs> yeah. corridor and check out the airship. Alright, so here's that ramp I was talking about earlier. This goes back up to that garden area. Got some good dragon's ambience going on right there. I like that vibe. 
this is kind of like a little uh, docking bay kind of deal. So lower the lower the docking docking thing, majigger down, and raise it back up so you can leave. And you're good to go. Travel on the airship. So it's a pretty sweet little thing. You can activate these chests to put stuff in if you're moving from your house. Um, somewhere else and want to move into this house so that makes it pretty sweet so you don't have to use any console tweaks and you can definitely role play that in so in order to activate this thing gotta sit in the captain's chair and then activate the destination make sure the dock's up like I just did let's say let's go to uh, Riften alright start the engines gives a pretty neat little cutscene of you kind of flying in the air you can also move around if you want oh, that was a fail Pretty sweet deal. We got some good flames in the back, so that's your that's your fuel and going on. Let's sit back in the captain's chair. There we go. It's the best part about Skyrim right here is moving stuff around. It goes so slow on the Xbox uh, controller. I mean, any day now. All right, here we are in Riften. So, this is pretty awesome. See? Riften right here. Now this is on the outside, so just keep that in mind. You have to go actually into the city still. But I mean, right by Riften. So, there it is, floating in the air. And if you want to leave, just go ahead and go back right up. This docking portion does not work, it just kind of stays down, so it's just kind of built in. But then just go ahead and sit back down. And say you want to go back to the sanctuary, just go ahead and activate that. We'll head back to the sanctuary. Start the engines again. So, yeah, the airship is pretty sweet, and I like that a lot. It makes the home more useful, kind of as like a central hub for your activity where you could um, travel about. So, you don't have to fast travel. Because if you play the game without fast travel, it makes Skyrim so much better. Trust me on this. It makes it a lot better. And I really prefer not to fast travel if I can. Sometimes I will because I'm stressed on times. Like when Skyrim just came out, you're busy with school. And for me, it was college. And it was just like, didn't have time to run for 30 minutes from Markarth to Winterhold. All right. Lower head the dock here. I head right back upstairs real quick. So yeah, definitely check this mod out as it's very well done. Lots of detail added to it. Pretty sweet quest line too. And um, I would definitely recommend getting the quest line version as well. And uh, yeah, that's all I can really think of right now. Got some sweet dragons flying up in there. That's pretty ominous. Especially if I have a lot of base. So there's a elevator that brings you back down. And if you want to leave, you can always go here instead of using the airship and use the Dios. And travel right back on down. Ooh, it's raining this time. So you may freak out and think you're about to die and maybe open the console for a TCL for a toggle collision, but you're okay. Because he scripted in a nice slowdown effect. And there you are. Safe and sound on the ground. So, anyways, that's it for this video. And I hope I didn't slaughter it too much because I did this live, but I enjoy doing it live, so... Anyways, I'll put the download link for this mod in the video description below, so definitely check it out, and please remember to endorse it if you like his work. It was a lot of detail integrated into it, a lot of very original stuff. Questline was very well done, lots of cool books to read that were amusing to do, or to do, <laughs> to read, and I had a lot of fun exploring this mod and doing a review of it, so anyways, yeah, check it out.